But I appreciate him giving me the, some time to share, talk, teach, trick, trick. No, I don't trigger. Um, explain. Uh, but we're going to talk about a few things. I, uh, it was interesting. I actually had a dream at 3.30. I don't know where this came from, but if, you, if any of you are dream interpreters, you can maybe help me with it. But I was, I was, it was a play. I was getting ready for a play here. I had a part. And uh, I was dressed in like this blue overalls and that sort of thing. And I was going up for my part. And then Ben and Kara came and they're starting to tell me about their trip. And I'm like, hey, you guys wanted me to do this. I got to go. I was like all stressed and woke up. But the, the thing that really stuck out is when I looked, like checked my, you know, thing in the mirror, I had really curly hair. <laughs> so I need some help. How to, what is the interpretation curly hair? But uh, today is going to be, and I, I, I think it was perfect timing because, y'all, how many been to the TU that transformed you? We have a few people. Thank you. Get a little support. Throw me a bone. Um, but it was cool because it was, it was like, you know, back to back. So Thursday, uh, I just had so much stuff in preparing, and I'm like, well, I'm going to make it a two-parter. So Thursday, we did sort of the first part. And I entitled it, Working Out Your Salvation. What comes up for you? Just that conversation. Does, well, let me ask you this. Does anybody know exactly how to do that? No. All right, perfect. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But I teed it up, and you know, we got into some specifics on just sort of the aspects. So what I'm going to say is, little shameless plug, uh, go to the, the Facebook page, to check that out because I think it'll help make a little bit more uh, sense or at least give you a a better foundation. So T-U Renewed is the Facebook page. So you can check that out for part one. Today, I entitled this one, and I actually got this from Ben. And I don't even know that he was planning on saying this or knew what he said, but I was sitting right over there and it was during one of his messages. And and like I said, I don't know if it was in the script or just came up, but he said, um, and this is today's title. If it doesn't exist in heaven, it doesn't belong in your life. Yeah, right? Say it with me. If it doesn't exist in heaven, hold hold on, hold on. So I say it, then you repeat it, okay? (laughs) <laughs> get, get with the program. <laughs> if it doesn't exist in heaven, it doesn't belong in my life. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. We'll see. <laughs> but that's, that, I mean, I just want to stay with that energy. So keep that in your mindset as, as we talk about this. Because, it, 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 you know, when we sort of get the whole, does poverty exist in heaven? Does disease exist in heaven? Do broken relationships exist in heaven? Right? So these are some of the external stuff that becomes real clear. But today we're going to look at the inner game. Those are external situations that absolutely are triggers for the internal game. But I'm going to say it's the internal game that created those things in the first place. So let's get to the root cause. My chiropractic work in 30 years, the whole goal, every time somebody came into my office, I didn't look at the symptom. I didn't look at the complaint. I had empathy for what they were going through and feeling and, 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 you know, dealing with all the challenges and troubles, but that wasn't my focus. My focus was what was causing that thing. And so we're going to look at the inner game. We're going to look at the internal stuff, the stuff like fear, worry. Anxiety, depression, does that exist in heaven? And it doesn't belong in your life, okay? And the cool thing is, is that it's possible. It's what? So a lot of this stuff, I actually sort of had had the experience, and it was (laughs) dealing with sort of this business deal, and it was just tormenting my thoughts. Just, you know, it was just falling apart, and... You know, these, bless you, these, these thoughts that we deal with, and we're going to talk about where, where they come from, but it, it becomes, you know, the brain and body make it real personal. And it just, it just it, my brain wouldn't let it go. It was just constant. And, you know, here I am, the mind mastery dude, right? And my brain was taking me out. And, and it, to the point where my body started getting involved. 
So my body started having feelings of, you know, the heart racing and the stomach and just all these very uncomfortable, very unpleasant sensations. Are you following? Yeah, so you've probably all been there if you, if, if, if you have. <laughs> That's why we're, we're doing this, because I didn't like it. And I sort of, not only was I dealing with these emotions and feelings and sensations, I was sort of blaming God. It's like, what is this about? Because I've been doing your word. I've been following your stuff, you know? And he's like, well, that's just it. You were sort of leaning on your own understanding on how to apply my stuff. I'm like, oh, geez, you know? So what we're going to talk about today is, is sort of that big picture and how we can begin to engage with that. And the, the verse, you know, when we talk about making these changes, the verse that, that, that really comes to mind and just sort of, and I know you've heard it a million times, but I'm hoping I present just a little different take on it. Romans 12, 2, right? Be transformed by what? Yeah, but when I first heard that, my first question, well, what, what mind are we renewing? Because you got four of them. So let's, let's take a look at that and just create a little, I just want to create a little structure and foundation before we sort of jump into this stuff. And yeah, this is the sort of the part where you take notes. And the, the reason I, I do this is, so we all, we all have that foundation, you know, because that's just what I said. It's like, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know how to do that? Do you know what, which mind, are, you're right? It's, it's like, okay, well, let's, let's get focused on that. And so let's first look at, that's the brain. <laughs> it's not a football helmet. <laughs> and in the brain, we have two minds. We have what I refer to as the surface conscious. And what's the other one? You all know it. Subconscious. So these two minds make up the soul. And it's really interesting, and I, and I, you know, I love any time pastors and teachers bring this up. The challenge is we usually, they usually limit the soul to what? Mind, will, and emotions. Which is great. But if, again, we stick with this sense that the human soul is a byproduct of the brain, the brain does a lot more than that. <laughs> There's an infinite number of processes that the brain is going through. So we're going to say anything related to the function of the human brain is your soul. Way beyond just mind, will, and emotions. But if we took, take a look at that and just sort of, okay, where is it coming from? I'm going to say the mind and the will primarily are at the surface conscious level. At the subconscious level, we have things called meanings and memories, which a lot of people refer to as beliefs. And this is really important because a lot of people talk about beliefs, but what they're really saying is, I made an agreement with my surface conscious, my intellectual logical mind about this idea or concept. When in fact, you really have no idea what you believe because it's at a level of the subconscious. What does that mean? It's out of your consciousness. If you really want to know what you believe, look at your results. Look at where you're experiencing. What are we, the poverty, <laughs> the disease, the broken relationships, that's a reflection of the belief system. <laughs> so, no. So what, what we're looking at is, again, let's take a look at if we're really going to do this transformation thing. We need to understand the roles of the parts of our brain and nervous system. Everything, what is Proverbs? Everything, all issues of life are coming through what? The belief system. Do all issues of life generate from the thought you just thought? Thank goodness. <laughs> Right? So right off the bat, okay, well, there's a different level of consciousness that is determining my reality and the outcome that I deal with. So those are the two minds. Then we got another mind called your spirit. I call this your superconscious. Because it is outside the function of your brain. It's not dependent on having a neuron associated with a thought. It's a pure thought. It's your essence. It's your purity. This existed before you ever had a brain and a body. 
but it still has consciousness. Your spirit has a mind, will, and emotions. How do we know? It's your spirit that chose to get a brain and a body and come to earth. There's some spirits that says, no thanks, Lord, I'm hanging out here with you. We all chose this reality to get a brain and body and have a different experience. But the spirit still has its own thoughts, its own feelings, and has the ability to choose just like we've got going on over here. But then there's a, a fourth level that often doesn't get talked about, and we call that the cardiac consciousness. Cardiac consciousness, the literally, literally the research says that the heart has a neural network similar to the brain. It has a mind of its own. It's called neurocardiology. And these nerves have also the ability to think, feel, and choose. Believe it or not, your heart also has this level of consciousness. So that's what I'm saying. It's important. You gotta be, we're being transformed. This is a big deal. Renewing the mind. Well, which one? Okay. Does this one need to be renewed? This one is the part that chose to receive the Spirit. And so this is important. Because when we talk about this, this ability to have a peace that surpasses all understanding, it's an Isaiah. It's perfect, it's powerful, and it's ever-present. Is that, in your, is that the state that you're in 24-7? <laughs> no. But is, so, so the, you know, is the Bible lying, though? No, because this level of peace doesn't exist in your soul. That's not its job. The soul's job is actually to do what we just said. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. It's not its job to be in a constant state of peace. That's the job of the Spirit. That's, and this is what I want you to connect with, is just like you don't feel the blood <laughs> flowing through all your blood vessels, you know it's there, yes? You, you don't even think about that you don't have blood flowing through your blood vessels. I want you to connect with this idea that this peace that surpasses all understanding that will override the fear, the worry, the depression, is also constant. It's just in a different level of consciousness. So transformation, part of a benefit and outcome of transformation and renewing your mind is opening up this connection of spirit and soul, allowing that peace to flow in and begin to, uh, Ben talked last night, uh, last week about subduing. It's your spirit's job to subdue, subdue your soul because that's where the power is, right? The cardiac consciousness, so if we, if we look at some of these, these roles, what I, what I would say is that this, the, the surface consci conscious, it's, it's the chooser because ultimately it does have that power to decide. All too often, what happens is it's the emotions, it's the feelings. And that's what I said when I was dealing with this, because the, when, when the body gets engaged, it's just it's pretty much a downward spiral. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to have a thought that keeps up. Now the body, now your body's feeling it. So it's this negative feedback loop that keeps going. And so I said, okay, Lord, what's, what's this one about? And he says, yeah, you know where it says, um, cast all your cares and anxieties upon me. I said, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> but the issue is still going on. That didn't change. Are you going to come down and fix that thing, that situation? <laughs> he says, no. He said, get rid of that feeling in your body. Cast that feeling, that sensation out of your body so that now <laughs> I can be, start to step back into that, that, that space of clarity and, right? And so it's just, it's just a little different, different take on, on what's going on. But the chooser constantly gets to decide. This is the manifest, or what do we just say? You said everything you're dealing with, 
on an external environmental level, that's it's a direct correlation, a direct connection between the belief system. Nothing happens out here unless I believe it in here. This one is cool. This one I call the detector. Everybody point to yourself right now. All right, look around the room. Is anyone pointing to their head? No, right? But yet, right, neuroscience says your ability to process and comprehend you as a person sitting in a pew on Sunday listening to me is processed at the prefrontal cortex. But yet you all pointed where? Huh. The detector lets you know when the soul is out of alignment, right? How does it feel when you hear that, that bad doctor's report? How does it feel when it, you hear that, that negative you know, financial report or stress with your money or anything else going on? Where does it hit you, right? And it hits you there because this brain, this mind, knows the thought you just had is not true. And you better check yourself. So the feeling isn't something there to torment you and stress you out and drug up, run away, or try to cope and deal with. Go to counseling. I've got to deal with this feeling. And you get really, we get really good at dealing or <laughs> coping with our feelings and not listening to what it actually is trying to tell us. Are you following? So the heart is the truth detector. It's the lie detector. Also, <laughs> when you hear a good report, where you hear good news, you feel loved and valued and appreciated. Where do you feel that? Heart. Not your brain, not your mind. Its job is to bring to your attention <laughs> the beliefs that are in alignment or not in alignment. So this is the structure. I always promise Ben I'll give you some verses, so let's look at a couple of things <laughs> before I get too far, right? So this, um, this process of, it, well, the Second Corinthians 2.3 is where we know it's written. What does it say? I hope I wrote it down. No, 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 no. Whoa, that's so cool. I've, I feel like a real pastor now that actually said something, and it appeared on the board in the back. I've arrived. All right. I was, when I really see that, it's like, how did they notice to put that up there? All right. Wrote to you as I did, but I agree with one who gave me the greatest joy to know from being drunk. I don't know if that was the one. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll come back to it. This way, I was using that verse. Is there another, another uh, interpretation, maybe? I don't know. The, the one I was looking at was the, the, the truth was written on your heart. Does it, does it say that? Yeah, I must have got the wrong verse. Oh, well. So, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, it's... it's <laughs> Our, our truth detector is it works and we trust it because that's where God put his word in that, in that neural network, in that, that brain. Here's the other one that we know, the observer. This is the last part. The observer is the superconscious. And this is really important because the superconscious is the part, what did I just said? Perfect peace. Why? Because it is connected in a constant, eternal, ongoing basis with the Holy Spirit. Everybody, oh, where's the Holy Spirit come in? The Holy Spirit is communicating co constant discussion between itself and your spirit so that your spirit can be the ultimate observer. So when you observe your, your soul in action, that's when you get to begin in put in, in this space of, hey, I'm living through my brain and body, not as my brain and body. When I was getting taken out with all these tormenting thoughts and uncomfortable feelings in my body, the more I allowed my brain and body to dictate my additional thoughts and actions, now I was a prisoner. I was a prisoner to the flesh, right? 
But stepping into the Spirit allows me to observe, to begin to learn, to begin to understand, to begin to look at where it's coming from. So the observer is in a constant lookout, if you will. Psalms 42.5. Psalm 42.5. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become restless and disturbed within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him. No matter what is going on, I shall sing his praise. That's your spirit talking, right? So this is the test, everyone. When you are operating from your highest consciousness, from your spirit, oh, from the part that Jesus exists, all right, when you became born again, where did Jesus, if Jesus is in me, right, is he in my soul? If Jesus was really in, in my soul and in my brain, would I have been having those thoughts? No. <laughs> would I have been having those feelings in my body? No. But it says he's in me. Where? In my spirit. So this constant the perfect peace, the ability to have joy in all trials and all sins sounds crazy to the soul. Why? Because it's not what your soul is capable of. It's not its job. <laughs> oh, your spirit, though, it is. Why? Because the power, the life force of the risen sun is in your spirit right now. Right? Why don't I feel that, Dr. Matt? Why is it so? Because we haven't developed that connection. Because there's resistance, there's beliefs, there's chatter, everything going on that just really dulls that. Every once in a while, right, <laughs> the spirit will sneak in and you, you're okay. Maybe, you know, a different thing, maybe pray, maybe get exorcism, maybe different things. That... <laughs> but it's temporary, why? Because we haven't worked out our salvation to not only... <laughs> Calm and heal and suppress, but open up and expand that that communication. Are you following? Really important. What else? Some of the other differences. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. How many times (laughs) we did that, the breakthrough event in in, uh, Flagstaff, and we did a really powerful exercise of a declaration, and pretty much everybody went up. My wife was working it at the time, and it was, it was, we, had, we were just teasing back and forth because she was processing and coaching people to really get connected with what are they declaring about their transformation. And pretty much every one of them defaulted, I'm a child of God, <laughs> Before, which is true, but is that just, are you really connecting with that, or is that just, you know, the good Christian thing to say? When you know it and you feel it, it's because the Holy Spirit has spoke that into your spirit, and now you know that you know that you know. Don't come from the head, come from the spirit with that one. 2 Timothy, Isaiah 6.23, that's that's the, Isaiah 26.3 is the part where we talk about that perfect and constant peace that is ours, but it's in our spirit, not our body and soul, Right? It, it, we will experience that when it's allowed to flow, when there's an open flow, when there's a good communication. Are you following? No. no. <laughs> Fair enough, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So easier said than done. And I only got 45 minutes with you, and that's going fast. So what, I'm do- what this is is the framework, and as I just said, you don't, there's a lot of things we trust in, but really don't understand. Do you understand how your brain is keeping your heart beating right now? No. Do you understand how your brain causes your stomach to digest food? Right. But we see it all the time. And what I'm saying is, is if, if the brain and body were in charge, we would never be at peace. We would never have joy. We would never be in a state of of hope, expectation. Why do you come to church? There's some hope. You're you're ready for change. Your brain and body could care less about change. Your brain and body is all about safety through sameness. In fact, it it, it uh, rejects transformation. Everything that we're talking about, your brain and body are like, no, 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 no. That's too scary. 
It means I'm going to be thinking differently. It's me, I'm going to be th- it means I'm going to have more money and more joy more time, which goes absolutely against what I believe I should have, and we can't have that. So I have to resist that. So again, the, just the, the question you ask yourself today is, uh, is am I going to live <laughs> as my brain and body, or am I going to step into my spirit? Right? And, I, and I'm going to show you some techniques and steps to do that. But I appreciate your honesty. Nobody said, working out yourself, it just, it's like going to the gym. Does it take one workout? No. In fact, it's sort of an ongoing thing. <laughs> and the last part, right, 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of what? Same thing. We know that verse, we say it all the time, but yet we still got this thing. We still have fear, worry, strength, and all that stuff. Where is the mind of Christ? Your spirit. So the Bible's not lying. I'm just trying to show you, give you an idea of, of where everything is positioned at so we can begin to work with it and be effective in working on our salvation and be effective in transformation and renewing our mind. Amen? All right. So let me show you this too. I think it's pretty cool. It's just a little side note and... I don't know, so we'll get to everything. So it's Matthew uh, 22, 37, right? Love God with all your what? Heart is cardia in the Greek. So it says to love your heart with, or love God with the neural nets, the brain of your heart. This, uh, love God with all your soul, which is in the Greek, it's suke. Whatever, suke. There's a Y in there somewhere. And this word, when you see suke in the Bible, because you'll see soul 50 different times with 50 different Greek, it gets a little confusing. You've got to be able to look at the Hebrew and Greek to see what mind exactly is it referring to. And when it says love God with all your heart's soul, it means suke or soul, both brain, both surface conscious and subconscious. And then again, then it's then it uh, uh, singles out the subconscious where it says mind, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. In this one, in this mind, it's referring to dionia. And if you look at the Greek in that, subconscious. Why would it mention the subconscious specifically? Does your subconscious ever stop? 24-7. It's always thinking. It's always contemplating, even when you're sleeping. How cool to tell your subconscious, tell your dionia to praise the Lord while you're sleeping, right before you go to bed. Give it instructions. So now, 24-7, you're doing exactly what the... Pray what? Unceasingly. You've got to give your brain and body direction to do these things and understand what you're speaking to. I'm speaking to my cerebellum. <laughs> I'm speaking to my hippocampus that thinks stuff all the time. And a lot of times it thinks of the memories of my past that really hurt and really cause a lot of pain. Why would it do that? Why would my brain keep thinking about that stuff? It's a safety mechanism, not a sabotage mechanism. It's just trying to make you remember what happened, try to avoid it so it doesn't happen again, right? But in the meantime, you're dealing with right now, and your brain's stuck in the past. Because it thinks it's doing a good job to bring these memories and pain up so that you can be more prepared and ready if it happens again. Nine times out of ten, right, it doesn't. But... We're saying, give it some direction. Tell it what to think. So those are, the, those are the minds. So which one are we renewing? Romans 12, 2, 12, 2 says, when it uses the mind, this verse, mind, subconscious, Romans 12, 2, uses the word noose, which refers to surface conscious. Surface conscious is our target, all that, <laughs> to answer the question, which mind are we renewing? Spirit's all good, heart's the truth detector, 
doesn't have the memories, doesn't have all that, that garbage. This one's the power. This one's the manifester. But it's just following directions. <laughs> it's just doing what it's been told to do. The cool thing about this is that those thoughts, those feelings, everything that's going on, it's a learned response. And if it's a learned response, it can be unlearned. But what chooses, what initiates that, what oversees that, what directs it? Prefrontal cortex. Okay? Are you following? All right. So, looks like I got 15 minutes. What I want to do now is basically take you through a, a, a process, take you through a little exercise. I'm going to give you the steps, and then we're going to, we're going to work with it a little bit. But this, this process, uh, and I, again, I'm going to say, check out the, some of the, if, <laughs> if what I'm sharing today is resonating with you a little bit, you really love the TU classes, because this is what we talk about every month. That's pretty much where we're at. And I did a class where we sort of talked about the difference between stress and anxiety. A stress trigger is something that's happening external. It's an external trigger that when it goes away, the stress response goes away. Are you following? You know, you've got a money issue, whatever. Someone gives you a lot of money, boom, you're stressed for that moment, but then it goes away. An anxiety response is an internal thing. An anxiety response is your brain and body is coming up with unpleasant thoughts and feelings all on its own. <laughs> and again, it does that. Why? It feels threatened. You don't have thoughts of fear, worry, stress, depression, anxiety, unless this part of your nervous system feels threatened. Good to know. Because now we can ask, what are you scared about, brain? <laughs> Why do you feel so threatened in this moment? What specifically and what exactly is in trouble? That's a great question. You get a cramp in your leg, you can get really upset at your leg. <laughs> and the pain is overwhelming, and all you want to do is get rid of the pain. And you get really good at getting rid of that pain. But because we didn't do what, what happens? We didn't fix what caused it. Electrolyte imbalance, maybe dehydrated, maybe I'm overtrained. The pain is a cry for help. Thank you, leg. Not real pleasant. I would rather a different experience, but I appreciate and respect your intelligence to let me know when I'm out of order. Why would anxiety, fear, worry, depression, and anger be anything different? Your nervous system doesn't make any distinction between physiological threat and psychological threat. Pain is a cry for help. You either listen and begin to dig a little bit deeper. It's, it's actually intuitive or counterintuitive to the flesh. The flesh wants to avoid, push away, treat, stop. Spirit says, lean into it. Spirit says, what's that about? Investigate. Find out. So that it can be healed, corrected, overcome, to never experience again. Why? 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 <laughs> the, the mind works no different than the body. It's the, it's the same. The nervous system controls them both, has the same operating system around them. So, when we, I, all that to say, you know, <laughs> because I didn't manage this, it, it went into this. And so now I had two things to work. But I want you to, if we don't handle the stress stuff, usually turns into that anxiety portion of it. And I love Dr. Carolyn Leaf's work. How many are familiar with her? Excellent. She's got a great book. Uh, it's called Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess. And she deals with the internal trigger, the internal stuff. But what I want you to, to sort of look at is that the verse we're going to be basing this on is in, in Corinthians, where we take captive the thoughts, right? And all too often, <laughs> we see that verse as crisis intervention as to when we're having these experiences and thoughts and everything's coming up, that's when we use that verse. I'm going to say no. How many thoughts a day do we have? 40 to 60,000. How many of those thoughts are negative? 90%. How many thoughts are those the exact same thoughts you had yesterday? Right? So that's the brain. That's how it works. That's its operating system. 
And so taking your thoughts captive is an ongoing process, not just when they're negative thoughts. I'm going to show you that we want to do the exact same thing with positive thoughts. If we're truly living by our spirit, and we're in a, just think, you know, we're in a constant state of spirit consciousness overriding, overseeing soul and body consciousness. And so now I'm in this, I'm in this dance, I'm in this, this pattern of always monitoring. What are you thinking, soul? Oh, right? <laughs> do we, do we, is that negatively charged, positive, whatever? So I can stay on that and be in constant this process of taking our thoughts captive. And so I call this the uh, <laughs> detach or capture and convert process. Capture and convert because it's designed to work with both external, internal, positive and negative, crisis and growth. Meaning I want you to see take captive your thoughts as a growth opportunity. It's, it's a verse to help us move us forward, not just deal with this present moment crisis. Are you following? Yeah, because that's where most people go, is I had a negative thought, I better take it captive, and I don't know how to do that. Versus, man, all my thoughts exist, and this is another thing, exist for a reason. Your brain doesn't give you, doesn't think stuff just for the heck of it. <laughs> so when we are in this process of observing from the spirit, I get to learn from that thought. I don't judge it. Oh, that's a negative thought. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to rebuke it. I'm going to think of something else. Okay. Versus, my brain wouldn't have come up with that unless it had something to share with me. Unless it was in trouble. Unless it wanted my attention. Unless it was trying to teach. Are you following? If I see my brain and body as something that's trying to work with me, to guide me in the best way that it knows how, even if it's pain and suffering and stress and worry, it's still a gift. Just like that cramp was. What if, what if my electrolytes were so bad, right, <laughs> that was causing that cramp and I overlooked it? Oh, and then the electrolyte imbalance eventually caused heart attack. I didn't listen to the pain. I didn't appreciate its purpose. I just wanted to dismiss it because it was uncomfortable. I was living in my flesh. That's all the flesh wants to do. It pursues pleasure and resists pain at all costs. Again, are we living as our brain and body or are we living as our spirit? So the first step, take, you can make, take some notes on this one because I think I'm going to leave that board up for the, for the next class. But the first step is, is, what's that? Do you want me to write it down? Oh. Da -da -da. Great, Matt. All right. Hold on. Y'all saw where, where I was going with this, though, right? <laughs> My brain and body are thinking. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're going to like this. You, this is why you came. This is, this is the, that was just the intro. Okay. See that? <laughs> and for my next act. <laughs> so, first thing, and this is really important. The neuroscience says when you write this thing down, it literally changes your, your brain, your, the framework. A negative thought, the research shows a negative thought, because every thought in, that's generated from your soul has a nerve cell. And a negative thought has twisted proteins. And these twisted proteins actually create inflammation. They reduce blood flow and create the different conditions, the anxiety of different stress. So there's a chemical thing going on in your brain when you thought that negative thought. So this is not just for transformation and growth. This is for, like, brain health. This is for your mental health. Are you following? You know, it, the, the inflammation, that's the number one cause of heart disease, diabetes, and all these other diseases. And what's the number one cause of that? Stress, negative thinking, right? So it has, has a lot of um, applications here. So... Detach and observe. So, first part, you want to huh, detach because what are we doing? 
We're stepping into our spirit to observe the thought. Interesting, my brain just thought that. My body is feeling this sensation. My nervous system wants me to do this. Speak as it is. When you say, I'm stressed, I'm worried, I'm depressed, now you're living as your brain and body. You're not stressed. It's impossible for you to be stressed or worried, afraid, or anything else. Your nervous system all day long, but you're not your nervous system. Okay? So detach allows you to create that space, allows you to create that gap so you can observe and ask the question, would God think this about me? Number one. Right? Write it down. Would God think that thought about me? That thought that I just had? Second one, would Jesus think like this? If he's truly in me and I have the mind of Christ, would that thought be there? And is it biblical? Can I find this thought, this idea or concept in the Bible? We call it the GOP test. <laughs> Not political, but G, does it glorify God? Glorify. Does it obey God? And is it aligned with his principles? So you ask those questions really fast. As you learn this technique, that's what should come up when you notice that thought. Take it through those tests. Would Jesus think this? Is God, would God think this about me? Is it glorify God? If it's yes, because again, we're, do, we're taking captive all of our thoughts. And the ones that I'm going to say you really want to connect this test with are the ones that are emotionally charged, that are ener energetically charged, that your heart just said, take notice of that thought, whether it feels really bad or really good. Are you following? If the, <laughs> the, how many, we got a lot of thoughts, but if, you know, they're not, there's not an emotional charge, probably nothing to really take attention. Your emotional state gives you the direction to take notice of that thought. No judgment, it's really bad, really good, just it, it is what it is. And we're lining it up to the word. So if yes, reinforce it, build on it. Good job, soul, for thinking that thought. You can reward your brain and body for doing good. <laughs> Are you following? I was biking the other day and wiped out bad on my, and I really biffed my finger. And I've been practicing this for a little bit, and there was a lot of pain in my finger. And the first thing that I thought, it's okay, buddy. We're, you're healed. I'll, I'm taking good care of you. You're all right. And you laugh, but that's, I want you to have a relationship with your brain and body, not be it. My finger's a part of me. It's like a little guy, you're okay. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> Versus, oh, my finger, uh, my life is ruined. <laughs> Relationship. Ask if it's good, work with it. If not, that's when we go to find out. Uh, if, if it doesn't pass the test, then come up with a verse. At the very least, what's the opposite thought? What's the exact opposite thought of that? Right? We find a verse, and this is where it's so important. This is why we come to church Bible study, because we learn the verse. I'm going to say do this in advance. You already know the thoughts that take you out. You already know the emotions. You already know a lot of your triggers. Work in advance. Find the verse. Find the words. Find the positive opposite of that thought. You already know your brain's been thinking. Be proactive with this. And the research says, say it three times. You need three times positive to cancel out the one. Working out your salvation. It's not a one-time deal. <laughs> it's constant all the time. Why? Because this thing never stops. The brain and body never stop. you got to be on it. Okay? Second, a couple things then. Uh, so like I said, be preactive. So that's, the, what did I say? So the first, detach, then ask. Yes. Reinforce. No, find verse, at least the opposite. Okay? So that's the capture part. And this is something that can be done instantly. I really encourage you, if you can't do it in the moment, because the writing part is really important. But if you're in the heat of the moment, stuff's flying, you're driving, whatever, you're not going to sit there and write it out. But you remember that experience. Do it later. That'll be your, your evening journaling. 
okay? The second part's a little deeper. So the convert part is the first part that we get into of being a victor. What does that mean? Taking full responsibility of the thought your brain just had. It's your brain thinking that. It's your body feeling that. Not the devil. I'm not going into spiritual warfare and all that stuff. I know it exists and it was powerful, but here's the deal. If <laughs> the devil really had influence on your brain, think about that. If he was really able to penetrate your brain and cause you to think things, it'd be a nightmare. In the same way, we just I said earlier, if Jesus is in my brain, then I wouldn't be thinking that. So Victor mentality says, this is my brain thinking this thought about me for a reason, and I want to find, I, 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 it's not in aligned with the word, so now it's my job to get it aligned to the word. So the victor mentality says just that. I'm not going victim to the situation, circumstance, the devil got nothing. I'm owning this thing, taking full responsibility. And what did I say before? <laughs> It learned it. The only reason that thought and feeling keeps showing up is because at some level, I wasn't guarding my heart. What did the Bible say? Of all things, the most important thing you all need to do as human beings is guard that heart. Because everything from life is flowing through it. So because these thoughts and feelings are showing up is because I didn't take my responsibility and guard my heart back here. I was five. I was three. You know, right? I got to... But... At the end of the day, it's still my brain and body. So the victor mentality gives you that, that space of power and control, knowing that I'm, I'm following the principle. Second thing, now moment. This now moment is precious, and I get to experience pain. I know. It just doesn't even feel good to say that. I get to experience this mental torment. I get to experience all this, this, this heart-pounding, stomach-wrenching feeling. But the now moment is this moment that says, uh, I get to choose in this moment. I realize it's there for a reason. There's a purpose with this. And I can be grateful. What is the second Ben talked about it last week. We talked about frequencies. The brain and mind think in frequencies and hertz. That's how we measure thought process. The second most powerful next to love is gratitude. How can I be grateful in this moment about this pain? Right? How can I, from my spirit, my soul doesn't have that power. My soul wants to just totally go victim to the pain. But my spirit has the power to be in gratitude in this moment, I don't like it, <laughs> but I understand it. It has a purpose. I'm going to learn through it. Either I take this as an opportunity and learn, or I succumb to the flesh for it to just show back up again. Gratitude. Easier said than done. Take some practice. Take some work. I get it. But when we begin to understand and look at what, where it's coming from, it's a shift, it's a, it's a shift in perspective of the experience. Higher consciousness looking at it. Last piece, you're like, thank goodness. <laughs> Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a cleansing, purifying energy. We talked about in the Transformed You class, this part working out your salvation involves sanctification, which is purification. Involves uh, uh, salvation. It involves uh, transfer. Involves several pieces. But the 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 uh, my brain has been tainted. My brain has been been infected. Right. I can have empathy for my brain and body for thinking and feeling like this. Right? Just like my finger. You know, I felt bad for him. It's okay, buddy. I can feel bad for my brain. I'm not my brain. I can, I can have concern for my body because I'm not it. So I can forgive my brain for latching on to that idea that happened when I was three 
that painful, hurtful experience that, that caused me to think bad about myself, that caused me to associate my identity with a lie, that caused me to form this, this perception of self that was less than God created me to be. It did it for a reason. It was trying to protect me. I get that. But it's not working now. <laughs> it's not helping me now. I forgive you. I forgive you, body and brain. Clearing. Create that space for grace. Because forgiveness is an action step. The action step, in order to forgive, you got to see the blemish. I have to see something bad to forgive. But once I forgive, right, I want to see me. I want to see my brain and body as God sees me. Pure, white as snow, covered by the blood. He can't see sin in me. Why do I see it in myself? Again, the spirit can do that. <laughs> you forgive once. That's why it says if you forgive and then step into grace. And this doesn't just work for yourself. It works for someone else. When you know you truly have forgiven and released, you see them in grace. You can't see what they did. You don't have any negative energy at all toward that person. It's like complete, forget, are you following? Forgiveness, I have to see the bad. I have to see what was done bad. You do it once, and the Bible says, and you step into grace. If it, then you do it again, 700 times, whatever. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, Forgiveness is an action for a step, then you step into grace. Create a different energy around how you've been thinking, how your body's been feeling, how it wants to behave, and do all these different things. Compassion, empathy for yourself. All right, I got a few minutes, so uh, who's the organ player? <laughs> I thought it was, weren't you? Okay. No, Jose, we love Jose. Give Jose a hand, come up. I just wanted to take a minute and minister. We're going to pray, so close your eyes for me. We're just going to sort of walk through this process. I always want to do that to the background music when people pray and stuff, yeah. I'm a real pastor now. I got the scripture on the board, keyboard dude going. Just take a deep breath in. Lord, we just, we just thank you for your spirit who guides us, directs our spirit into all truth, into all healing. You are the source of our transformation, the source of our purification. And we just open that communication right now between your spirit and our spirit. And in, from that space of our spirit, the observer, just look to your right right now and see Jesus right next to you. He's always been there. You're in your spirit. You see him. You're connecting. He's giving you the thumbs up. And you look out over your brain. See it as a garden. And you're there with Jesus, and you, and you look out in the distance, you see the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit searches your heart and mind. The Father said, I will pull up any weed that I did not plant. Now you and Jesus walk through your garden. You see the Holy Spirit. He's pointing. He's pointing at something. There's that hurtful thought. There's that thought of fear, worry, depression. What is it? The Holy Spirit found it. See you and Jesus walking towards it. And you reach down together and pull that weed out. Just notice what's happening in your brain. The Holy Spirit goes over and says, here's, here's something else. Here's that memory that hurtful memory of your past it just won't go away it needs healing and you and Jesus walk over you grab that 
hurtful, painful memory of the past and pull it up. You see the Holy Spirit just cast it off your brain. What are you noticing? What's happening? He sees another one. There's that emotion, that feeling in your body. Maybe it's caused some disease or dysfunction. The body follows the brain. We heal the brain, we heal the body. See exactly where it is, fully exposed. Nothing is hiding right now. The light of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are exposing all the lies, all the hurt, all the pain. See where it's being directed. See it right now. Where is it in your brain? And together, pull that weed. Cast it away. Notice what's happening. Feel the difference being rid of these thoughts, feelings, memories. Notice what it feels like to be governed by your spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, in union with Jesus. What would that feel like 24-7? How would your life be different if the Spirit was in control. Perfect, powerful, ever-present peace. A joy, an unspeakable joy through all situations and circumstances. You have the ability. It is in you. Allow yourself to receive it, experience it, and release it. breath in and let it go James let's give it up for Dr. Matt give him a hand